How high could Bitcoin go if the $30,000 major resistance breaks toward the upside? Could we potentially have still seen brand new lows? And which would be the better performing asset class, Bitcoin or altcoins, moving in to the next bull market? These are questions we'll be answering in today's video, so stick around to the end. Let's get into it. Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you're all having a fantastic day today. We're here to go over those three major questions discussed in intro. The difference between Bitcoin and altcoins performers moving into and during bull market cycles based on historical data. We'll also be discussing the possibility of brand new lows and those targets. And of course, our upper targets if that $30,000 major yearly long resistance breaks toward the upside. Make sure before we get into the video to smash the like button, comment any questions, and of course, hit that subscribe button so you do not miss another video. Of course, all of our videos are focused on price action, data, technicals, and objective facts. No emotion, no hype, no shilling, no anything of that matter. You can also find us on Telegram, all the information down in that second pinned comment. You'll get access to videos, charts, analysis, updates, educational posts, news events, so, so much more stuff in here, guys. Definitely recommend taking that 20 seconds to go ahead and join up. If you are interested in our VIP group, where you'll get access to not only our group, which is where we post our trading signals, but of course our group chat, you can go ahead and contact me via this message in the free group and of course find our trading track records here. You can find all the information of what you'll receive. And remember guys, every single trade we post in that VIP group has exact entries, exact targets, exact stop losses. With our group chat, you'll get access to a few subgroups, general chat, trading and charts, financial information and news, a help group, and questions for daily videos, as well as educational posts and altcoin videos. So much value in our VIP guys, go ahead and join up. Let's get into a video starting off with the market data. Currently for the month, 21.93% in the green March has been a very, very volatile month. It started off incredibly poor, we're actually down 15% at one point, but then the Fed's announced a basically a 180 pivot there guys. They changed the narrative, banks were collapsing, they decided to turn that money printer back on, and we saw asset prices rise. Bitcoin leading the way of course, for a rise in asset prices. 24 hour volume down 22.35%, you can see it on the top left hand corner, and liquidations are down 20%, you can see that in the top middle of the monitor over here. Looking at those liquidations guys, nearly $200 million in the last 24 hours, so liquidations are still up there. Looking at the last 24 hours on the breakdown, we can see that the liquidations have come from primarily a mix between longs and shorts. There has been a lot of chop within this resistance, the current resistance we're still in now. Let's go ahead and take a look at the broader markets. So. The DXY guys has been on the down move and we've talked a little bit about this, more importantly discussed this in a lot more detail in yesterday's video. We talked about how the implications of the slow move toward the downside or a slow uh, progressive move towards a pivot is going to show negative impacts on the DXY and weaken the US dollar. And the DXY is a visual representation of the strength of the dollar. When we start to see the uh, DXY move downwards, we do generally see asset prices rise and the DXY dropping is going to be bullish for assets. However, guys, there is so much more to the story surrounding how the prices are moving right now in the economy and particularly in the financial markets. And I'd highly, highly recommend going to watch yesterday's video uh, to go and find out more information about that because we're not going to cover it today. However, the DXY has dropped all the way down to 102, a pretty major support as you can see. We have bounced from 102 and are slowly making our way upwards. But again, guys, we're not looking for any sort of move towards the DXY towards upside unless 1035 can be reclaimed. The Dow Jones and S&P 500 actually aren't looking too fancy over here. You can see that the S&P 500 and Dow Jones are both on red candles at the moment on the way toward the downside. Now, the Dow Jones has actually rejected from the 32,000 level, a level we needed to break above to see any sort of continuation upwards, and that still remains a fact. Moving toward the downside, if we lose the $32,000 level, we will see a continuation downwards potentially retesting the support. Of course, that is not going to be a very good look for the Dow Jones on the daily chart. Moving out to the seven day chart, to the weekly chart, 
we can actually see that the market is not looking too healthy here, right? We're underneath the 50 EMA, the smaller time frame move areas are pushing down. We're entering a lower volatility or a lower volume range over here. And we have actually made this lower high. All in all, guys, we're not looking too amazing on the Dow Jones. And like we said already, we do need to start reclaiming some of these higher support levels, or should I say higher resistance levels, to start flipping the way the chart is looking. Because all in all, we're not looking too amazing. I wouldn't say we're going to continue massively downward, but I'm going to say we're in a, a period now where we're kind of making this decision, right? We're in this middle phase. Where we can either find support and make this local high and continue upwards, or if we do lose the current support, we will be pushing downwards, which will strengthen the bearish case. And this is very important, particularly moving into the Bitcoin chart, which we'll discuss in the video today. Looking at the S&P 500, it looks like we have developed a ascending channel formation. As you will notice, ascending channel, ascending channel formation is a bearish structure. Looking for a loss of this trend line will result in a continuation downwards, potentially retesting some of these lows over here. Okay, the support range between around 3,900 to 3,925. However, this is a uptrend until it is broken and therefore a break over 4,000 could send the S&P 500 back towards the upside. Right now, in that little apex between 4,000 and the uptrending support, we're in a decision phase. Wait for the break to determine the move. Let's go ahead, guys, and talk about Bitcoin next. Because I wanted to briefly interrupt today's video to discuss my favorite exchange, BitGet. If you're looking for a safe, honest, reliable, and accurate exchange, look no further than BitGet. You can sign up by the link in the description to support the channel and get access to three exclusive perks. That being up to 5,005 US dollars in trading rewards, up to 15% discount on your trading fees, and exclusive access to our Mega Well promotion campaigns that we run every few months. Alongside that, guys, BitGet is a non-KYC exchange, meaning you do not have to KYC. It is completely optional. BitGet also has a protection fund that secures user assets against external hacks and threats in the space. Alongside that, guys, BitGet offers up to 125x leverage on futures with extensive amount of trading pairs and liquidity on the market. I highly recommend signing up to BitGet. It is the exchange I've been using for over a year and a half now, including all of our members. If you're interested in signing up, trading there, and supporting the channel, you can do so with the link in the description. Thanks for listening. There really is so much to discuss. So as we said in the beginning of the video, we're going to talk about three main points. We'll start off with the potential new low. We'll discuss the potential new low first, how low could Bitcoin go. Then we'll jump into the 30k resistance and talk about how high Bitcoin can go. And then we'll jump into the Bitcoin versus altcoin chart. So on the higher time frame, guys, we can see Bitcoin is currently struggling to break through that major $30,000 resistance. And obviously, as you know by our previous videos, if you are new here, you'll find out in just a moment, the $30,000 resistance represents the yearly low of the prior bull market. This is probably one of the most important resistances we need to break out of in terms of horizontal resistance ranges on the macro chart to really, really flip the entire macro view towards a bull market or towards a macro uptrend. So at the moment, resistance is resistance until it is not. It is very important not to get overly bullish while we're at resistance. Remember, the majority of your pur purchases for Bitcoin should have already occurred, right? If you've been following the channel, you would have purchased 18,000, 16,500 and 19,200 break of POC and downtrending falling wedge resistance. So if you're contemplating whether you should buy here now, you should take a step back and accept the fact that you were late to buy Bitcoin and you should now wait for the next best entry point, And that is not right now. It doesn't matter what people are saying on Twitter. It doesn't matter how much people are hyping you up. The fact is the fact buying at resistance is never going to be the best decision. You might get lucky. You might buy resistance once and it continues upwards. You might get lucky, but it's not about whether you make money or not. It's about the practices and applications you apply to your trading over a long period of time that's going to make a distance, a difference. So if you constantly buy resistance, you might be right or you might be right a few times, but a vast majority of your trades are going to end up negative. Okay? So 
Building good habits from the ground up is how you become profitable and buying resistance, it doesn't matter what we're talking about, buying resistance is never going to be the place to buy, it's always going to be the place to look to offload your risk or sell at profit. So we'll discuss what the next time to buy is in just a moment, but let's talk about the downside. So currently guys, until we break over 30,000, we're not going to be entering a bull market and we can use this chart to confirm it. As you can see on this chart, Every single time we break above 30,000, which is this red line on prior bull markets, on a monthly candle, we'll see a continuation into a bull market, right? We saw it over here, continuation. We saw it over here, continuation. And we're currently coming up to retest the resistance over here. Now, until we break over that point, we technically do not enter a monthly uptrend or a macro monthly uptrend that will develop into a bull market. And therefore, the possibility for a rejection that results in new lows although we haven't seen it before, is still very much possible. Now, there are a lot of supports we're going to have to break down from to see that primarily we're looking at support around 26,400. We're looking at a very important 254 day long major horizontal support between 24,400 and 25,200. That is going to be incredibly strong support. And then from down there, we're looking at support such as 20, uh, 22,500. We're looking at support such as 22,000. We're looking at support such as 20,000. And our most important support, we're looking at at 19,200 to 18,000, guys. If this support over here breaks toward the downside, new lows are programmed in. New lows are almost guaranteed for Bitcoin if we lose our support. How low could new lows take us? Provided we drop, reject, push all the way down, lose all of these support levels, which is very unlikely. I've been saying this the entire time. It is very, very, very unlikely we move to new lows, but it is still a small possibility, guys. So we're going to discuss it anyway, just to be prepared for the worst case scenarios. It's always important to prepare for worst case scenarios. If we see all of that occur, the new low we're looking for is going to be 12,000 to 14,000, guys. And I've said this entire time, this entire, entire, entire bear market, my lowest prediction was 18,000. My lowest purchase was 16,500. I've been saying the bottom was in ever since I saw this falling wedge develop on the higher time frames. It represented decreasing momentum, volatility, volume, liquidity, and it represented bullish consolidation. Ever since then, the bottom in my eyes has been in and we've seen a rally towards the upside. However, while we're at major resistances, we could still see macro rejections and macro rejections could develop into smaller time frame and higher time frame rejections and resistances and downtrends, et cetera, et cetera, that eventually develops into a macro reversal. So although this is very, very unlikely, we do still need to talk about it for now. If we do see that rejection, we are looking for 14,000 to 12,000. The reason being, if you look at the VRPV here, you can see a significant drop off underneath this local low all the way down until volume starts to rise again around 14,000 and really, really, really picks up underneath 12,000. So a massive chunk of support. This is if you had to imagine a massive, massive cushion, a massive, massive cushion or a massive rock, whatever analogy you want to use, it is a massive chunk of support. And as we approach this low volume range and speed up in volatility, we should see the volatility and volume drop off as we approach into the 14 to 12,000 range represented by the local top here and this long period of one year support or resistance at this period of 19 to September 20. That is going to be the absolute low target, guys, if Bitcoin does create new lows. Like I said, the possibility is there, but the probability is not. It's very unlikely we see that. And if we do see that, we're going to see that coming from a mile away, right? We're going to see that coming from a mile away. It's not just going to be, oh, one day we're up here and the next way we're all the way down. No, not going to happen like that. We will see that coming and we'll be able to discuss it as it approaches and as the charts develop. However, it is something to keep in the back of your mind just in case. Now, 30,000 guys, like I said, is such an important resistance, 28 to 30,000. As you can see, the price is still currently within that range, right? While we're in resistance, resistance is resistance. As you can see, this is going to be that yearly resistance. So let's talk about, hypothetically, if we break over that level, how high could Bitcoin go and where would Bitcoin go next? So what we're going to do, we're just going to look at these ranges up here on a higher time frame really quickly, look for massive zones of confluence and support on the higher time frames to discuss potential targets. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and draw in some of our prior structures. We had a nice ascending channel formation over here, which we broke down from. We saw temporary resistance and support within this range. We can go ahead and draw that in. We can see a local top, 
a local low. We can see a lot of confluence in that range over here with these local highs. And I'm going to go ahead and draw them out just so you can see these local highs over here, local highs over here. Once again, support resistance, support flip. We saw breakdowns, increased volatility. And more importantly, we saw a nice strong rejection candle from that point here. So we're looking at around 40,000 to 40,100 as that next major, major, major resistance on the chart above the current major resistance. Now, we're going to experience smaller time frame, weaker resistances develop within that period between 30 and 40, of course, but if we're talking about the macro targets, 40,000 would be that next major higher time frame resistance. Breaking above 40,000 would be a very, very good sign for Bitcoin, of course. Every single time we've seen that, we've seen it a few times, we've ended up seeing nice strong rallies towards the upside, which we do expect to occur again if we do get that breakout. The next major, major resistance we'll be looking at on the higher time frame, we'll go to a weekly chart for this, is going to be that local top that we got rejected from on the 200 between 46 to 48,000 and breaking over that will send Bitcoin parabolic. That is when I believe the volatility and the volume and the speed is gonna come back into the market for the bull run. When we see a break over 46 to 48K, that is when I really think the bull run is gonna kick off the most. We're gonna see a lot of price action volume coming. Now I do not expect this to happen any date before the halfening, any date before uh, what we have on the four year cycle chart over here, which is April, 2024. I do not believe Bitcoin is gonna get over 48,000 before April, 2024, guys. So we do have some, we still have quite some time to go for that. Let's go ahead and talk about the short term price action really quickly, and then we'll discuss what is going on with Bitcoin versus altcoins on the larger scale in relation to that bull market. So going to the daily chart guys, let's go ahead and discuss how we're looking. So as you can see, we're seeing quite a fair bit of volatility within this range. We're seeing a few green candles print, a few red candles print. It's been very, very choppy, up, down, up, down, up, down, a lot of news events going on. It's got, again, a lot of people are being liquid, liquidated over here and there's been a lot of confusion and more importantly, indecision in the market. Now, when there's confusion and indecision and spastic price action occurring at resistance, that should be a big ass red flag in your face and you should be very, very cautious about taking trades. And in fact, even in the VIP channel, we have significantly reduced the amount of trades we've been taking just because right now is like probably the most poor trading environments we have quite frankly seen ever since we retested this resistance back in February. So over about, you know, we're looking at four or five weeks, this is horrible, horrible trading environments because of how choppy and how indecisive the price action is. But once again, guys, as we see this price action develop, we still do see those indications of weakness, right? We're seeing weakness still. We're still seeing weakness. Even on the daily chart, we can still see brand new shorter time frame divergences play, play out. We're seeing on the 12 hour chart here, we're seeing bearish divergences start to develop within this price range over here. If we zoom out to the higher time frame, we can see these bearish divergences have been actually very present on the price action ever since around mid to late January. We're seeing bearish divergences play out right over here. We're seeing a perfect bearish divergence. Rising price, decreasing RSI. We're seeing weakness in this trend. In fact, this trend has been showing us weakness for quite some time now. And again, we can push upwards into weakness for a long time, but eventually we will get rejections and those rejections are most likely to occur in major resistance zones. So we are seeing bearish divergences here. Again, the momentum is showing that. We can see on the MACD, we've actually just printed our two day decreasing positive momentum candle. This, this light green little volume candle you see over here, might be hard to see on the two day, if we go to the one day, you might get a bit, little bit of a better view over here. You can see that this is actually representing weakening positive momentum. This represents that the price is starting to lose strength. So I do still anticipate a rejection from 28 to 30,000. I do still think the rejection we get from 28 to 30,000 is going to be a perfectly healthy correction provided we find support above, anywhere above 19,200 to 18,300, which is that major support that will enter new lows that we did talk about in the start of the video. Now there are scenarios in which Bitcoin could basically push sideways and upwards for so long that the momentum resets and the price continues upwards. That is definitely a possibility, but we can't make speculative assumptions. All we can do is look at the data we have now. And as per the data right now, on the higher time frames, it is starting to suggest weakness. Looking at the smaller time frames, such as a four hour chart, we did see 
quite a strong double top currently. We're seeing a double top print on Bitcoin, of course. We saw a four hour double top at 28,600. We have currently seen a rejection. I do not expect any sort of continuation upwards anymore unless this high, this local double top is broken and closed above on a four hour chart. Until then, I expect the price to continue toward the downside. Lower targets, guys. Look for whole numbers. 27,000, okay? 26,400 local tops. 28,000 is a major, major support. Below there, 25,200, 24,400. Let's go ahead and finish up the video discussing the difference between Bitcoin and altcoins historically and based on their performance in prior cycles. A lot of people ask me to go over this, so I'll go over it again. If we look at the prior performance of altcoins, this is a total altcoin market cap, excluding Bitcoin and Ethereum, and this is a Bitcoin market cap, we can see the percentage gains at certain intervals. If we take where the bull market kind of kicked off, which was the break of this local high here, okay? And we take the distance between that breaking point and we take the distance to the first local top, okay? And we did exactly the same thing on um, the old coin chart over here. So we'll go ahead and draw our same horizontal line in, which is going to be this horizontal resistance which matches up over here. And we draw that same distance between that red line, that horizontal break point to that same date range of the local top on Bitcoin, which is actually going to be over here. Um, we're going to go and put that in a little bit more accurately in a second, guys. We can see during the time Bitcoin did a 255% move, on average, altcoins saw a 48% rally. Now, this is where it gets very interesting. When did altcoins really, really, really start to pick up? They started to pick up once Bitcoin completed that first pullback. You can see Bitcoin rallied to the top side, then pulled back. And ever since it reached that pullback, from there, Bitcoin decided to rally another 138% to tops. Now, if we take that same date range for altcoins and we apply that, that initial starting point to the starting breakdown point for Bitcoin, that takes us to this date over here, which is going to be the 11th of January. From there to the top, altcoins on average did 700% when Bitcoin did 138. So we generally see in that starting phase of the bull market, Bitcoin really, really lead the market forward. After Bitcoin sees that first major retracement, that is when money flows back into altcoins and altcoins really start to pop off. So personally, I am only holding Bitcoin until I start to see that. After April 24th, after we get the halvening, after we get that first strong rally past 48,000, then we get that retracement and then I'll be moving more into altcoins. Now, here's the thing. Just because on average, altcoins didn't rally 700% in that first rally and Bitcoin went up 250%, whatever it was, it doesn't mean there won't be some altcoins that massively, massively outperform Bitcoin. Of course, there are going to be, but there are also going to be altcoins that massively, massively underperform Bitcoin. It's a complete average. So you can have massive success Buy altcoins cheap now, buy altcoins cheap a few months ago if you did, and holding them. But again, guys, there's no absolute guarantee of that based on historical data. It is always going to be a safer choice to get the Bitcoin first and then scale into altcoins rather than getting altcoins first and hoping to just make it from day one. Because a lot of altcoins just really don't go back up. If you look at 2017 altcoins, they really didn't go back up in 2020, 21 bull market. If you look at 2021 bull market altcoins, a lot of those will not go back to new all-time highs. They won't even reach the prior highs we saw in 2021 because there's so many bag holders of those coins willing to sell every single time the price moves up a little bit, guys. Something to keep your eyes on. I hope you enjoyed the video. Go ahead and sub to the Crypto Academy courses to learn how to trade. All the information here, 10 unit course to teach you everything from market patterns, structures, technical analysis, indicators, market psychology, emotional control, et cetera, et cetera. Now, sign up to BitGet, guys. It's the best thing you can do to support the channel. Go ahead and trade there. Where I trade, you get 15% off your fees, and you heard all about that already. So go ahead and get into that. I hope I see you guys tomorrow. Cheers.